So with all this stuff going on with the Black Girl Gamers controversy, these Sweet Baby Inc., all these narrative design companies, Elon Musk decided to chime in. But it's not the Elon Musk tweet that I'm going to focus on. It's a strange wording of a tweet and response to that Elon Musk tweet from Niche Gamer out of all places. Now, if you like the work I do here, if you like the videos that I put up, subscribe today. Uh, the more you subscribe, the more you're going to learn on what's going on, especially with the Sweet Baby Inc. debacle and the narrative design studios that completely push, are pushing gamers out of the industry. They don't want us gamers playing their games anymore. They just want our money, but not play the game or comment on it. They just want us to be mindless automatons. Anyway, Elon Musk puts up this tweet. Uh, it should not be acceptable for any company in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist against white guys. This was a response to uh, uh, Ashley St. Clair. This is a massive problem. Plus it's widespread throughout the entire gaming industry. This goes back to the quartering, uh, back to the Kelly tweet where raise your hand if you're, if you're not a white man and buy video games. So this has gone down the line. So it's very interesting for niches, niche gamer to come in on something like this. While we do agree with the base sentiment of gaming companies overplaying their hands per se, unfortunately we can't cover this particular story for more stories like it without potentially getting punished by PR firms hired by those same companies who we have to rely on to get access to video games for review and coverage purposes, ranging from smaller devs to mid-sized operations to even AAA game companies and publishers alike. Because a lot of those PR people support the people who hold these similar views like what Elon is referring to here. We're already having significant issues experience roadblocks regarding getting access to AAA titles because we have covered the Sweet Baby Inc. stories alone. It's quite unfortunate. So, this is how toxic this, this has become. Sweet Baby Inc. has become so toxic that you can't speak about them. You can't talk negatively or anything about them. But on the other side, if you are Sweet Baby Inc., no one wants that injected in the game. So the consumer now wants nothing to do with Sweet Baby Inc. So every part of this aspect, coming back to Sweet Baby Inc., they are the toxic incarnate. They are planet pollution in this case where it's just bad news all around. I don't care. I'm going to cover this because it's an interesting topic. Now with Niche Gamer... I kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, they run a large website. They've been doing game reviews for a very long time and they still want to be able to, I guess, access those game reviews, but people are going to review the games regardless. And a little bit of money in that case where you can buy these games will go a long way. So is this a situation where niche gamer isn't getting enough money to cover, to buy the games and then do them? I don't think so. I really don't think so. They did make another tweet a few hours later. We made a post last night because we're fed up on the status quo to anyone saying we're bending the knee. This post is to say we're not. Making that post will already irritate the people causing us issues and it's time we've stopped placating them. We're committed to free expression and enthusiastic press. That means we want people to make and play the games they want to play. And we want to share the news you care about. That's what we stand for and that's what we're going to do. Where does this go? It's a very strange um, outcrop of tweets to go over where Niche Gamer isn't really experiencing anything in this. They could have made an article which would have showcased all of this, but instead they put out a tweet and it's a very confusing tweet. A lot of people are sitting here going, what's going on? Now, Vera Dark also decided to chime in on this and completely call them out. And I chimed in on this, but I didn't go as deep as that. So Vera Dark comes out and pretty much says, you know what, it's not worth burning the bridge of your consumers, uh, your customers. Um, 
Play Xbox, PlayStation, Warner Brothers, Square Enix, Capcom, Ubisoft, Bangai, Namco, Amazon Game, companies I've received denials for game codes. Most of these give codes to creators with reaches far smaller than mine. So they deny me. I criticize their business practices. Have I stopped live streaming games? No. And this really goes down to the point. It doesn't really matter. We're going to continue playing these games. We're going to play the games and criticize where they might be. I, on the other hand, I don't have all the money in the world, so I don't drop 90 to a hundred dollars on a game. I'm in Canada, so our dollar does not go nearly as far. This is really where it comes down to. It's, it's that kind of idea of who cares? Uh, about the the PR firm who cares about them not supporting your your medium your medium is going to stay there you can write articles you can do everything around the gaming space it doesn't matter if you have these PR firms or not these PR firms are public relation firms if they're going to choose to work with you they're going to do it regardless what you do they're choosing to work with uh, like Sweet Baby Inc they're going, there's going to be ones out there that are going to choose to work with you. And you know what? That's the, where I sit there and look at this thing. If people don't want to work with me, fine. I'm still going to make the content I want to make. I'm still going to put up the videos I'm going to put up. And of course now, Sid Alpha has to chime in. Of course, the god name of YouTube integrity, a simple answer because they are wanting promoters, not honest critics. Niche Gamer chose the path of the sycophant. People like Vera choose the path of integrity. It may not be integrity of an idea you necessarily agree with, but she's honest, she's direct, and she doesn't kowtow. Wow, this coming from the snowflake himself. Is this an attempt at burying the hatchet there, Sid? Is this the attempt to say, you know, snowflakes don't matter? Uh, your, your precious Baldur's Gate 3 isn't, didn't do as well as people thought it did. You know, they split ways with Wizards of the Coast, but now we come back. We come crawling back because Vera makes a very good point. She doesn't kowtow to anyone. And Sid Alpha, in all honesty, if you want to butt into the situation that you don't like to cover in your videos in the first place... Maybe you should take a step back and let the real boys and girls take care of it. Well, and you know, Niche Gamer coming back on their on their own terms. You're right, dude. We're totally not honest critics. Operation Zero Gate Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which we purchased, by the way, the lowest score currently listed on Open Critic. Good call. Hey, while you're there, could you remind the class about your falling out with the quartering? Sid Alpha is just making, making so many enemies. And hey, it, it, it comes back. It comes back. I gotta say, completely. Get wrecked, Sid Alpha. You know, there's sometimes you just gotta take a little personality of your own and inject it into a video. And that's probably what I did here. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Hopefully Niche Gamer works out whatever they're internally are trying to figure out on how to write articles here. Because... I think if their voice is being silenced somewhere, I don't think it's under their own uh, volition. I think there's something else going on there. Someone reached out to niche, a niche gamer and said, you guys got to kind of tone it down a little bit here on the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. Um, so we got to wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.